What is going on YouTube? So coming back today with my final 2016 NFL mock draft. So today will be a full three round mock draft. I want to outline kind of how I'm going to do this before I actually get into it. So I will go through all the picks in the video, but as they go along, um, especially when you get into the latter part of the second round and then the third round, uh, I'm not really going to be explaining out every single pick. Um, some I'll be talking about if they're more significant picks, or I really believe uh, that that certain pick could work out well or if it actually happened at all. All right, so go ahead and get into it. So I do have the updated draft order. I mean, obviously, uh, been a lot going down the last couple weeks uh, with the whole Eagles trade and then the Rams trading up to one. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. So at number one, I've got the LA Rams taking the quarterback out of California, Jared Goff. So I want to explain this pick a little bit. So I think it, I don't think it's obvious yet, but I do think the Rams are going to go with Goff. Um, coming into the 2016 college football season, I thought Goff was the best quarterback in the draft. And I think it's kind of 50-50 between Carson Wentz and Jared Goff. I think it more depends on the scheme they're going into. And when you're talking about a more sure pick, I think Goff is that guy. Obviously, he had more exposure. I talked about this in my scouting report, but... Um, the Rams obviously traded up to get a quarterback, so I think Goff at one is what's going to happen. So at two, I got the Philadelphia Eagles taking the quarterback out of North Dakota State, Carson Wentz. So there's been a lot going down with the Eagles recently with Sam Bradford wanting to get out of Philadelphia. They re-signed Sam Bradford, and I don't know if they were confident in Sam Bradford or they just didn't know they wanted to go with a different quarterback at the time, but again, you trade up, you're probably going for Carson Wentz. I mean, I think it's pretty obvious now that the Eagles are going to be going for a quarterback and it probably will be golf once one two so and number three I got the San Diego Chargers another team talking about trading out of their spot taking the cornerback out of Florida State and that's Jalen Ramsey so I like Jalen Ramsey to the Chargers they got rid of or well, they didn't get rid of uh, Eric Weddle um, left out of San Diego this offseason so that leaves a, a hole to plug in the secondary and the Chargers secondary is pretty weak right now, if I'm being honest. Um, Jalen Ramsey adds an instant boost to that secondary. I believe I've had him going to the Chargers in most of my mock drafts so far, and I think it's a good fit. At number four, I got the Dallas Cowboys taking the defensive end out of Ohio State, Joey Boza. So again, same thing. Last four mock drafts I've done, I've had him in the same spot. Uh, Cowboys need an edge rusher very, very badly, and um, Joey Bosa is the best available at this point in the draft. So number five, I got the Jacksonville Jaguars taking the linebacker out of UCLA, Miles Jack. Again, I believe I had the Jaguars taking the same guy in the last mock draft. Um, I love Miles Jack. I think he's one of the top three best uh, players in this draft. He's a supreme athlete, uh, extremely talented, got a good attitude. I think he fits in well with any team he goes to, especially a building defense right now with the Jacksonville Jaguars. They made big additions with Malik Jackson with... Um, Prince Mukamara in the offseason and looks like the defense is heading the right direction and I think adding a good guy at that uh, linebacker uh, position adding a guy that they can build around to another level is going to help them extremely so at number six I got the Baltimore Ravens taking the defensive end out of Oregon that's DeForest Buckner I still think DeForest Buckner is one of the best players in this draft he's an athletic freak <clears throat> the Ravens have pretty obvious needs at both um, defensive end and and at cornerback, they could use one opposite Jimmy Smith. Uh, Vernon Hargraves is a possibility. I think Jalen Ramsey is a huge possibility if, if he slips to six. I don't think that's going to happen, though. Also, um, I'd say that if DeForest Buckner doesn't go to the Ravens, then it'll probably be Laramie Tunzel. So at number seven, I got the San Francisco 49ers taking the tackle out of Ole Miss, and that is Laramie Tunzel. So whatever quarterback the 49ers decide to go with, they got to start plugging the holes in that offensive line. Um got a new regime with Chip Kelly uh, and I think you need for a guy that runs that high pace of offense you need a more athletic tackle some guy to build or, or build around on the offensive line and I still think the Laramie Tunzel is one of the best players in this draft so at number eight I got the Cleveland Browns taking the running back out of Ohio State Ezekiel Elliott I like this fit Ezekiel Elliott will come in and be an immediate game changer for the Browns I mean, they've already got an okay stable of running backs with Isaiah Crowell, Terrence West, Duke Johnson, but none of those guys are near as talented as Ezekiel Elliott. 
Um, Crowell's shown flashes in the past. Maybe in college he was that level, but not, I mean, he's had troubles since then. So um, if the Browns don't trade out of this pick, I think this is a good fit. So at number nine, I got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers selecting the defensive end out of Clemson, Shaq Lawson. So as long as the Buccaneers are able to get an edge rusher to fit their uh, 3-4 scheme, then I think they'll be fine. Leonard Floyd, Shaq Lawson are two good looks there. Number 10, I got the New York Giants taking the offensive tackle out of Notre Dame, Ronnie Stanley. So the Giants have two pretty glaring needs at both the offensive line and at linebacker. And if they're not able to get Miles Jack and Larry Tunzel, I think Ronnie Stanley's the next pick that would be good for them. Number 11, I got the Chicago Bears taking the cornerback out of Florida, Vernon Hargraves. So if Hargraves is, it'll, is still there at 11, I think that they're, that it's a no-brainer for the Bears to go ahead and pick him up. Um, they've made some big acquisitions this offseason on defense, and if they're able to plug that cornerback position, then I think they'll be uh, pretty competitive at all levels on defense. So at number 12, I've got the New Orleans Saints selecting the defensive tackle out of Louisville, and that's Sheldon Rankins. So I had the same pick last time. The Saints need a lot of help on defense, and that can start with the best defensive tackle in the draft. Um, he's gotten Aaron Donald comparisons in the past, and if you can add another anchor to that offensive line and add another person to give Cam Jordan some help, then the Saints will definitely be heading in the right direction in terms of the defensive line. So at number 13, i got the Miami Dolphins selecting the cornerback out of Ohio State, Eli Apple. The corner or the Dolphins need a cornerback. I think it's just best one available at this point. If they do, I think one scenario that would work out for them is trading up for Vernon Hargraves because I still like that scenario, but I don't think that he falls to them at 13. If he's gone, then you're looking at Eli Apple, probably the next one up. Maybe William Jackson, but I'd say Eli Apple's the next best cornerback. So at 14, I got the Oakland Raiders selecting the linebacker out of Alabama, and that's Reggie Ragland. So one of the last positions that the Raiders need to shore up on defense is linebacker. They could use linebacker or cornerback, and I think if either Hargraves or Apple is still available at 14, they'll probably go ahead and scoop up one of those. But with both of them gone, I think they go for the best linebacker in the draft available at that point, and that'd be Reggie Ragland. So number 15, I got the Tennessee Titans selecting the wide receiver out of TCU, Josh Doxson. So... Doxson is a great talent that didn't really get a whole lot of exposure this past year because he went down um, a little bit past the halfway point of the season and got his season cut short by, I believe, like a broken wrist. And I like Doxson, seeing him in person, just watching him a lot. You see his talent, athleticism for being a walk-on. He's tremendous. Um, it's hard at this point to figure out who the best wide receiver in the draft is. Everyone has their opinions. But the Titans need a number one wide receiver. Um, to help out Mariota and to go opposite DGB. And I think another guy like Doxon will help them out immensely. So at number 16, I got the Detroit Lions selecting the uh, defensive lineman out of Alabama, Jaron Reed. So the Lions need help with defensive tackle or defensive end. It's no secret there. They do have one of the most talented defensive linemen in the game in Ziggy Ansah, but they need someone to help them out. It's a thin defense. One that I think needs a little, or that needs to be upgraded. Honestly, the Lions, after the retirement of Calvin Johnson, are looking a little bit thin everywhere. And uh, adding a guy like Reed that they've shown a lot of interest in, I think would be a good fit for them. Uh, another one that I've seen uh, the Lions show a little bit of interest in is Vernon Butler from Louisiana Tech. So keep that name in mind too. So at number seventeen, I got the Atlanta Falcons selecting to, or selecting the edge rusher out of Georgia, Leonard Floyd. I think this is a good fit. Uh, guy going to Georgia gets to stay in Georgia, uh, make a short little drive from Athens to Atlanta, and uh, can go opposite Vic Beasley in a defense that I think ha would have a lot of potential in that situation. The Falcons um, have lacked pass rush the last two, three years, and adding one of the best pass rushers in the draft um, would plug that hole. So at number 18, I got the Indianapolis Colts selecting the center out of Alabama, Ryan Kelly. This might be a little bit of a reach for a center, but that's this has been one of the most talked about picks for the Colts. Um, I think they're either going wide receiver, or not wide receiver, I think they're either going offensive line or edge rusher in this, or with this pick. They need a lot of help on the offensive line and at defensive line and linebacker. Those are the three biggest needs for the Colts, and they can fill that center need. They've shown a lot of interest in Ryan Kelly, and this would uh, give Andrew Luck someone under center that, or at center that, you know, would would be an ex probably an extremely talented center and one he can rely on, good anchor in the middle for years into the future, and that's 
Uh, that, that would be a big key for the Colts heading forward, keeping uh, Andrew Luck upright and healthy. So at number 19, I got the Buffalo Bills selecting the linebacker out of Ohio State, Darren Lee. So one of the biggest needs for the Buffalo Bills is that inside linebacker. And I think a guy like Darren Lee is just too talented to pass up at this point in the draft. Uh, the Bills do have three glaring needs and really three only. And that's defensive end, wide receiver, and defensive tackle. So they or yeah, defensive tackle. So they do need help along the defensive line as a whole. And um, they also need help at inside linebacker because of uh, Manny Lawson. Just mediocre play at this point in his career. He's getting a little bit older. Uh, Nigel Bradham leaving. And, you know, that leaves not just one. That leaves multiple holes at linebacker for the Bills. So at number 20, I got the New York Jets selecting the quarterback out of Memphis. And that is Paxton Lynch. So... Pax, there's any number of theories where Paxton Lynch will go in the draft. Some people don't think, or some people think he, or some people think he won't make it past seven at the 49ers. And there's some mock drafts that have him going 31 to the Broncos. Now, I think with Goff once going one two, and the amount of quarterback needs in this draft, and how well Paxton Lynch showed out his pro day, I don't think he makes it out of the top 20. The Jets still haven't signed re-signed Ryan Fitzpatrick. I think they need a quarterback one that they can rely on heading into the future. Uh, Fitzpatrick did have a very good year, and I think that really any quarterback that's even sem or even semi-talented can be successful with the Jets. Adding in a guy like Paxton Lynch with uh, good mobility for his size, uh, high upside, and a guy that can just spin the ball, make a lot of, pretty much make all the throws that you need him to, uh, would be a good fit for the Jets. So at number 21, I got the Washington Redskins selecting the defensive lineman out of Alabama, Ashawn Robinson. The Redskins just need help at the defensive tackle spot. They don't have an anchor up the middle. And for a division that features um, running games like the Cowboys with, that, with how stacked that offensive line is, and with the Eagles, who had a decent running game last year and will probably improve the running game heading into this year, I mean, you, you need some you need some help up the middle. Um, this is the former division champions for the NFC East, and I think if they want to keep moving forward, they're pretty sound on the offensive side of the ball, uh, barring a running back. But adding in a guy that's as talented and uh, I guess as proven as Ashawn Robinson would be a good pick for them. So at number 22, I got the Houston Texans selecting the wide receiver out of Baylor, Corey Coleman. The Texans could use a wide receiver opposite DeAndre Hopkins that's a little bit more of a deep threat, a guy that's a little bit quicker, and Corey Coleman's that guy, a uh, guy from Waco that's good, or not from Waco, but a guy that went to college in Waco, gets to stay in Texas, I think it's a good deal. So at number 23, I got the Minnesota Vikings selecting the wide receiver out of Ole Miss, Laquan Treadwell. So I think the Vikings have enough speed, a wide receiver, Stephon Diggs is a short, speedy wide receiver that's one of their best options at this point. I believe they'll let go of Mike Wallace and Corderell Patterson, kind of the same type, a little bit more shifty, not maybe not the best hands. And adding a possession receiver like Laquan Treadwell um, would help them out. I think I think a guy like Teddy Bridgewater that can spin the ball as well as he can needs a guy that he can just toss it up to and can win those 50-50 jump balls. So at number 24, I got the Cincinnati Bengals selecting the wide receiver out of Notre Dame, Will Fuller. So the Bengals have shown a lot of interest in Will Fuller and Braxton Miller. I think they just want kind of that speedy wide receiver that can be a deep threat for them. I I like Will Fuller. I don't think he's the number one wide receiver like a lot of people are making him out to be right now. Um, I think there's wide receivers that are a little bit more talented than him, but he's so fast. He's such a great deep threat in Notre Dame, and I think he'd add a great deep threat opposite A.J. Green that the Bengals probably couldn't pass up at this point in the draft if he's still available. So at number 25, I got the Pittsburgh Steelers selecting the cornerback out of Houston, William Jackson. So again, as I mentioned earlier with the Dolphins, the Steelers have a pretty glaring need at cornerback, and I think for them it's just best cornerback available. Um, if Eli Apple does slip to that spot, then I think they'll probably take Eli Apple, but William Jackson is the most likely scenario. So at number 26, I got the Seattle Seahawks selecting the defensive lineman out of Ole Miss, Robert Kim Dietschy. I had this pick in my last mock draft, and I still like it. I think Ken Dishi needs a good situation to head into. Again, one of the most talented players in the draft still. Off-field issues are apparent, but I think if he's put into a good situation with a good coach like Pete Carroll, um, I, I think he'll fit right in. 
So at number 27, I got the Green Bay Packers selecting the defensive lineman out of Florida, Jonathan Bullard. The Green Bay Packers have a, not a glaring need, but they do have a need in the middle of the defensive line with B.J. Raji's retirement. Jonathan Bullard's an athletic guy that can play at the D or D, DT spot or at the D spot. And I think with that kind of versatility and athleticism, um, it'd be a very valuable asset for the Packers. So at number 28, I got the Kansas City Chiefs selecting the offensive guard out of Kansas State, Cody Whitehair. The Chiefs need a little bit of help on the offensive line. Again, versatility comes into play here with Cody Whitehair. He can play at the guard or the tackle position. The Chiefs could use a little bit of help along the offensive line. Jamal Charles coming back this year. You want to keep Alex Smith healthy for another year and bolster that offense to be a division a contender for the division title in the AFC West. So at number 29, I got the Arizona Cardinals selecting the safety out of West Virginia, Carl Joseph. So he's seen a big rise in his draft stock of late. Uh, rapid, I guess rapid rehab to his knee and people kind of realizing the talent that he had at West Virginia before he got injured. It's helping him out a lot. The safety position has been an absolute shit show this year when you're talking about draft stock. Um, there's been any number of guys who have been number one from Jeremy Cash, from Von Bell, from I think Carl Joseph at this point to Keanu Neal, um, to Darian Thompson. There's been a lot. And um, it, it it's really... I wouldn't say a numbers game at this point, but it's really whoever stock is the highest at this point in the draft. I like Carl Joseph. I watched him a lot this when he was healthy this past year at West Virginia. And it was a shame to see him go down with an injury. Um, he was he had one of the biggest hearts, some of the best work ethic of any player in college football. And I think that's going to translate to the NFL, and I think he could come back even stronger than he was before the knee injury. So at number 30, I got the Carolina Panthers selecting the cornerback out of Clemson, Mackenzie Alexander. So with Josh Norman gone, the Panthers need to fill that gaping hole they now have a cornerback. They already had one with Josh Norman still there if they resigned him to go opposite, but now they need a primary corner. And Mackenzie Alexander, while a little bit unproven because he wasn't really thrown to that much, is still, in my opinion, one of the best corners in this draft. They could look a few other ways. Again, for me, it's more best quarterback of, or cornerback available. Uh, for the Panthers, I think Mackenzie Alexander is the best fit at this point. Kendall Fuller has been talked about as well. And I think you can't count out a guy like maybe Artie Burns. Um, it's been talked about pretty heavily as well. Maybe Xavier Howard, probably not that though. Anyway, at number 31, I got the Denver Broncos selecting a defensive tackle out of Louisiana Tech, Vernon Butler. So I like Butler. He's athletic. He's big. He can stop the run. And after the loss of Malik Jackson, the Broncos need help along the defensive line. It's a good fit. Um, the Broncos will go quarterback, I think, if Paxton Lynch is still there. But if not, I think they go defensive tackle or offensive guard. If, like I said, if Paxton Lynch is gone and then also Cody Whitehair is gone, then I think next up is Vernon Butler. All right, so moving to the, I believe the second round. Yep. So... At number 32, I got the Cleveland Browns selecting the wide receiver out of Ohio State, Michael Thomas. So Michael Thomas, to me, could easily be a first-round pick. The Browns have a big need, honestly, almost everywhere. But I think this would add a possession receiver that they need, um, a good go-to number one guy for whoever's playing quarterback for them next year to look to. I still think Michael Thomas is one of the top three wide receivers in this draft but I think he's kind of getting overshadowed by guys like Josh Docks and Corey Coleman and Will Fuller right now. All right, so move on to pick number 32. Put my paper over. Or excuse me, number 33. I got the Tennessee Titans selecting the cornerback out of Virginia Tech, Kendall Fuller. Number 34, I got the Dallas Cowboys selecting the defensive end out of Eastern Kentucky, Noah Spence. Now, I do want to talk about this pick a little bit. I do think that the Cowboys... Um, We'll still have a need at pass rusher after drafting a defensive end. Um, and if Noah Spence is available with guys like Randy Gregory facing four-game suspension, I believe they have another one also facing a four-game suspension. Um, and uncertainty still at the position besides that, they lose Greg Hardy. Then I think a guy like Noah Spence, I mean, obviously they're not afraid to take risks on defensive ends. So that level of talent, I think, uh, the Cowboys are willing to pull the trigger pretty quickly. So at number 35, I got the San Diego Chargers selecting the offensive tackle out of Indiana, Jason Spriggs. If the Chargers don't take a tat or offensive lineman in the first round, I think they will end up taking one in the second. 
Number 36, I got the Baltimore Ravens selecting the offensive tackle out of Ohio State, Taylor Decker. Now, Taylor Decker's been uh, a mid to late first round pick in most mock drafts. I've seen his draft stock fall a little bit of late, and um, yeah, I just don't think that he's one that will be able to go any earlier than probably pick number 20. So at number, okay, get back to the mock draft here. So at number 37, I've got the San Francisco 49ers selecting the cornerback out of um, excuse me, Miami, Artie Burns. So Artie Burns, big physical corner that I think the 49ers would be very welcome to having. Um, they have a pretty fast needed cornerback and again, kind of best cornerback available so, or sort of scenario. So number 38, I got the Jacksonville Jaguars selecting the cornerback out of Baylor, Savian Howard. Number 39, got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers selecting the safety out of Florida, Keon and Neal. Number 40, I got the New York Giants selecting the running back out of Alabama, Derrick Henry. Number 41, I got the Chicago Bears selecting the wide receiver out of Pitt, Tyler Boyd. So I want to talk about this one a little bit. Tyler Boyd, a guy that um, coming into this year was talked about being a first-round pick, uh, Larry, drawing Larry Fitzgerald comparisons, was shut down almost all year. He was really the only threat that was that – was on that pit offense and I mean after James Conner went down or after James Conner went down and now with his cancer it's it, he was the biggest weapon on that team besides Tyler Boyd and um lost his draft stock or lost some I, I guess lost some stock in his draft stock his draft stock went down so at number 42, I got the Miami Dolphins selecting the tackle out of Stanford, Joshua Garnett. Number 43, I got the Tennessee Titans selecting the defensive tackle out of UCLA, Kenny Clark. Number 44, I got the Oakland Raiders selecting the running back out of <clears throat> Louisiana Tech, Kenneth Dixon. Number 45, I got the Tennessee Titans selecting the tight end out of Arkansas, Hunter Henry. Number 46, I got the Detroit Lions selecting the safety out of Ohio State, Vaughn Bell. Number 47, I got the New Orleans Saints selecting the tight end out of, not tight end, defensive end out of Clemson, Kevin Dodd. Number 48, I got the Indianapolis Colts selecting the defensive end out of Oklahoma State, Emmanuel Ogba. I like Ogba to the Colts. He is a guy that is a little bit, in my opinion, underrated. Um, obviously, going to Oklahoma State, I saw him firsthand, saw the improvement that he made throughout his three years here, and... It was tremendous. He was a three-star recruit coming into college and leaving college. I think he's one of the best defensive ends in the draft. Middle, second round, I think he's a steal. He can probably go as high as late first and still might, but I think late first to mid second is probably where you're looking at. And if the Colts are able to find a pass rusher like of that caliber at this point in the draft, they got to snag him up. Number 49, I got the Buffalo Bills selecting the defensive tackle out of Mississippi State, Chris Jones. Again, same situation. I could see Chris Jones being a late first round pick. I really like what he brings to the table. He's good anchor up the middle, uh, can bull rush okay, and is also a good run stopper. And the Bills have a heavy needed defensive line pretty much all over the place, and this is kind of a best defensive lineman sort of scenario. So at number 50, I have the Atlanta Falcons selecting the safety out of Boise State, Darian Thompson. Number 51, I got the New York Jets selecting the linebacker out of Utah State, Kyler Fickrell. Number, 40, or number 52, I got the Houston Texans selecting the center out of Notre Dame, Nick Martin covers one of the many needs along the Houston Texans offensive line. Number 53 at the Washington Redskins selecting the running back out of Arkansas, Alex Collins. So talk about this one a little bit. Alex Collins, I think he's one of the best running backs in this draft. I think he's underrated. A lot of people have him as their fifth or sixth best running back, maybe even seventh or eighth. He's an extremely physical runner. He carried the load this year at Arkansas, really broke out last year. He had a decent freshman year too. He's a five-star recruit coming into college. And I think his game with how physical he is while still having that speed and not really presenting too much of an injury problem in college, which was a surprise seeing how big his workload was. Now, the only thing with him is a lot of people say he was more a product of the offensive line than anything else. But with the Redskins having such a glaring need at running back and probably need more of a physical runner, um, since Matt Jones is more of that style and has been somewhat successful, and so is Alfred Morris, more of a bowling ball style runner. Um, I think Alex Collins fits that mold. So at number 54, I got the Minnesota Vikings selecting the defensive tackle out of Ohio State, Adolphus Washington. So at number 55, I got the Cincinnati Bengals selecting the defensive tackle out of Baylor, Andrew Billings. Now, I have no clue where Andrew Billings is going to fall. 
Um, there's been talk of him falling middle first round, and then I've seen some have him, some having him falling as late as the third round. I think he's got first round talent, and I just don't think with uh, with the quality of this defensive tackle class, a guy like this is probably going to fall in the middle of the second. And with the Bengals having such a glaring need along the defensive line spot now, at that spot, I think this is a good fit. Number 56, I have the Seattle Seahawks selecting the linebacker out of Boise State and the edge rusher, Kamalee Correa. 57, I got the Green Bay Packers selecting the linebacker out of Arizona, Scooby Wright. Number 58, I got the Pittsburgh Steelers selecting the safety out of USC and linebacker, Sua Cravens. Number 59, I got the quarterback converted wide receiver out of Ohio State. Braxton Miller going to the Chiefs. Number 60, I got the New England Patriots selecting the linebacker out of Maryland, Yannick Gaku. Number 61, I got the New England Patriots selecting the offensive tackle and guard out of Texas Tech, LaRaven Clark. Number 62, I got the Carolina Panthers selecting the defensive end out of Michigan State, Shalik Calhoun. Now I want to talk about this pick for a second. I think that this could be one of the biggest deals of the draft. Shalik Calhoun was talked about being a middle first round pick for most of the season. Um, his limitations as a pass rusher uh, brought his draft stock down to being a second round pick. And I think going into a pass rush scheme where he could be opposite Coney Ely um, would, and Kwan Short would make for a very devastating defensive line. And I think this could be a very good sleeper pick. But anyway, number 63, I got the Denver Broncos selecting the tackle out of Texas A&M, Germana Fetty. All right, so I believe that is it for round two. Um, no, I did want to mention I messed up on one thing right here. Um, I did have, um, let me see if I can find it. Yeah, I had the Chiefs taking Jack Conklin, um, not Cody Whitehair, and uh, I had Cody Whitehair sliding down to the Broncos. That was on me. I'll post that in the description when I get that done. So, um, yeah, like I said, the results of the entire draft will be in the description below because this is going to be a pretty long video of me just talking. All right, so move on to the third round. All right, so at number 64, I got the Tennessee Titans selecting the safety out of Duke, Jeremy Cash. Number 65, I got the Cleveland Browns selecting the quarterback out of <clears throat> Ohio State, Cardale Jones. Talk about this pick for a little bit. This one is an intriguing one to me. Cardale Jones, his, uh, his potential as uh, number one QB has been talked about for the last couple of weeks. Um, had, I believe, an undefeated record while he was at, or at Ohio State. Um, he's a big physical runner. He's got good arm strength. Maybe not the, maybe not the most accurate quarterback, but he showed that he could run an offense. And I think sliding him in right next to uh, Robert Griffin III would give RG3 some competition. Uh, the Browns talked about that they will draft a good young quarterback to give uh, RG3 some competition heading into camp. So at number 66, I got the San Diego Chargers selecting the defensive end out of Florida, Alex McAllister. Number 67, I got the Dallas Cowboys selecting the cornerback out of OU, Zach Sanchez. Number 68, I got the 49ers selecting the guard out of Arkansas, Sebastian Tritola. Number 69, I got the Jacksonville Jaguars selecting the defensive lineman out of Notre Dame, Sheldon Day. Number 70, I got the Baltimore Ravens selecting this cornerback out of southeastern Louisiana, Harlan Miller. Talk about this one for a little bit. So with the Ravens having, again, a glaring need of cornerback, I think adding a, one of the sleepers of this draft, a guy like Harlan Miller, a bigger, more physical corner, didn't get a whole lot of exposure in college and has seen a pretty decent rise in his draft stock over the last couple of months. I believe in him, and I think that he could slide in and be a starter for, or starter opposite Jimmy Smith day one for the Ravens and probably be a good piece. So number 71, I got the New York Giants selecting the cornerback out of Northern Iowa, DeAndre Hall. So number 72, I got the Chicago Bears selecting the offensive tackle out of Auburn, Sean Coleman. Number 73, I got the Miami Dolphins selecting the running back out of Notre Dame, C.J. Procise. So Dolphins get rid of Lamar Miller. They tried to sign C.J. Anderson, didn't work, so they need another running back. C.J. Procise, I think, could be that guy. Number 74, got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers selecting the cornerback out of Samford, James Bradbury. Number 75, got the Oakland Raiders selecting the running back out of Utah, Devontae Booker. So I don't know why. I guess he wasn't great in clutch situations. I was a big fan of his. I still am, but 
apparently the Oakland Raiders do not trust Latavius Murray and said they will uh, add a running back to give him some competition and maybe even take over that starting spot. Uh, Devontae Booker was an absolute stud in college and might be able to do that. So at number 76, I got the Tennessee Titans selecting the offensive tackle out of Baylor, Spencer Drango. Number 77, I got the Cleveland Browns selecting defensive lineman out of Penn State, Carl Nassib. Number 78, I got the New Orleans Saints selecting the wide receiver out of Rutgers, Leonte Carew. The New Orleans Saints need help at wide receiver with the departure of Marcus Colston, a longtime mainstay in New Orleans. And adding a guy like Leonte Carew that's got a pretty decent amount of upside, a guy that can go up and get it, a pretty athletic wide receiver, um, might be able to add another possession receiver to take Marcus Colston's spot. They don't really need a smaller receiver. They've already got that uh, slot filled right now with Brandon Cooks. So at number 79, I got the Philadelphia Eagles selecting the running back out of Arkansas, Jonathan Williams. The Eagles just need to select best running back available at this spot with the departure of DeMarco Murray. They need help there. Really, the only option they have right now is Ryan Matthews. So at number 80, I got the Buffalo Bills selecting the wide receiver out of OU, Sterling Shepard. Number 81, I got the Atlanta Falcons selecting the linebacker out of Ohio State, Joshua Perry. Number 82, I got the Indianapolis Colts selecting the cornerback out of Notre Dame, Kavare Russell. Number 83, I got the New York Jets selecting the offensive guard out of Arizona State, Christian Westerman. Number 84, I got the Washington Redskins selecting the safety out of Clemson, TJ Green. Number 85, I got the Houston Texans selecting the tight end out of Stanford, Austin Hooper. Number 86, I got the Minnesota Vikings selecting the safety out of Southern Utah, Miles Killebrew. If you watched any of my past mock drafts, I talked about how high on Miles Killebrew I am. I think he's a great sleeper in this draft, one of the best. He was actually in my top 10 sleepers uh, for this draft video. Uh, he's a fighter. He's maybe a, he's a smaller corner, but um, he's got probably some of the best work ethic of any player in this draft. And... The Vikings do need some help opposite Harrison Smith, and I think adding a guy like uh, Miles Killebrew gives them um, a one-two combination of safeties that is hard to beat. Excuse me. So number eighty-seven, I got the Cincinnati or Cincinnati Bengals selecting a defensive lineman out of Illinois, Jihad Ward. Number eighty-eight, I got the Green Bay Packers selecting the running back out of UCLA, Paul Perkins. So I think the Packers need help at running back. You can't roll out Eddie Lacy too much right now. I do think he'll come back better next year than he was last year he's talked about losing a lot of weight and apparently he has but adding a guy like Paul Perkins that was an absolute stud at UCLA a one cut back that's a lot quicker than Eddie Lacy uh, would give the Packers a big change of or a change of pace back they need um, I don't I don't even know if James Starks is still on the roster honestly but if he is then um, he's a good running back but again he's not the future of the Packers so Number 89, I got the Pittsburgh Steelers selecting the linebacker out of Georgia, Jordan Jenkins. Number 90, I got the Seattle Seahawks selecting the cornerback out of LSU, Richard Robinson. Number 91, I got the New England Patriots selecting the running back out of Indiana, Jordan Howard. Number 92, I got the Arizona Cardinals selecting the cornerback out of Mississippi State, Will Redmond. Number 93, I got the Carolina Panthers selecting the wide receiver out of South Carolina, Pharaoh Cooper. Talk about this one a little bit. I think this is an underrated pick. I think this would be an underrated pick. I like Farrow Cooper. He was the best weapon in South Carolina this past year by far. Um, he was alone in an offense that struggled immensely. Now, the Carolina Panthers are a team that is close to South Carolina. I think Farrow Cooper would fit in extremely well with the Panthers. This adds another guy, along with Kelvin Benjamin, that could give Cam Newton a real threat to work with on offense, a different style wide receiver than Kelvin Benjamin and we'll just add another weapon to an offense that desperately needs more weapons. So number 94, I got the Denver Broncos selecting the quarterback out of Penn State, Christian Hackenberg. So if Hackenberg does fall this far, then I think the Broncos have to go ahead and scoop him up. I've had him actually as early as the first round in past mock drafts, but Hackenberg's an, or an intriguing prospect, and I think the Broncos need as many quarterbacks as they can get to uh, have a, at least a decent QB competition heading into the season. Number 95, I got the Detroit Lions selecting the defensive tackle out of Nebraska, Moody Collins. Now, I'll talk about that one for a little bit. Malik Collins is a guy to me that is more of, again, of just a best pick available sort of uh, sort of situation. I I mean, I, I like what he has available in the way of athleticism. I've had him in my first round before. And while the Lions, I already have them taking Jerron Reed 
I think adding Malik Collins, Jaron Reed, and to a defensive line that already features Ziggy Ansah would give them a solid off or a solid defensive line heading in heading into the season. All three could be starters. Number ninety six, I got the New England Patriots selecting the wide receiver out of Clemson, Sharon Peak. Number ninety seven, I got the Seattle Seahawks selecting the offensive guard out of Mizzou, Connor McGovern. Then number ninety eight, I got the Denver Broncos selecting the linebacker out of Notre Dame, Jalen Smith. So I think the linebacker, I think the Broncos have the um, have the privilege of being patient right now, just because how good their defense already is. Um, obviously, they're going to have to add a linebacker at some point but Danny Trevathan's gone he was I think he's extremely underrated and I don't think they should have let him walk but went to the Chicago Bears and nonetheless the Broncos have to fill that need and Jalen Smith a guy that's a top 10 player in this draft if he's healthy is probably going to miss this entire season but I think the investment would be well worth it all right so that pretty much concludes this draft so like I said long mock draft three rounds my first three round mock draft uh, like I said, I had a little screw up with the Jack Conklin thing. I'll fix that um, in the description below. The results for the entire mock draft are going to be in the description below, all three rounds. Um, I'm going to put a link to my uh, last NFL draft scouting report video. Uh, I did the 10 most intriguing prospects to me, or most important. And um, yeah, if you want to go check that out, it does a little bit more individualized um, breakdown of each prospect that I did a scouting report over. But yeah, with the NFL draft coming up tomorrow, or at least starting tomorrow, day one, um, this is my last mock draft of the year for 2016, and I'm extremely excited to finally see what happens. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So yeah, get into some of the background information about Laquan Treadwell. He is a 6'2", 230-pound, I believe senior, maybe junior wide receiver, actually a junior wide receiver out of the University of Mississippi. And experienced a pretty tragic injury through his 